For the first time in uh, really ever, the iPhone is getting a, a little bit more interesting. iOS 14 is finally bringing a bunch of new changes and I've been running it here since it was announced at WWDC. I've had every single beta and you know, my phone setup doesn't change all that often because there's only a few apps that I use, but now it's actually drastically different. So let's dive into it. Here's what's on my phone with iOS 14. Okay, so the first thing I decided to do was get rid of all my home screens except for the first one. I found that I would never really use those anyway. They would just be places to dump a bunch of apps. But now we have the app library and um, I don't really like the app library. I've just been trying to force myself to use it and there's a bunch of problems with it. For instance, not being able to organize and categorize the apps yourself. I know that's just basically, you know, folders, but since it already has those there, I would like to be able to move them and pin them and make sure the same ones are in the same place. Everything kind of moves around. If I download a new app, everything moves, shifts. It's not great, but I'm forcing myself to use it. And so far, you know, I'm pretty much used to it. I just wish it was better. But because of the app library, I don't have to have all those home screens and I've really enjoyed having just the one. That's the one thing that I like the most. And here I have the apps that I use pretty frequently along with widgets and widgets, widgets are a big deal. Although of course I'm still running a beta so you don't have any third party support just yet. But even with the just stock ones, I found it to be really useful. And I basically set it up in I think the most efficient way for me to get things done. I have two main widgets here, one in the upper left and one right in the middle. The upper left is for the weather. I like seeing the weather, a lot of people don't, but for me, it's something I like to glance at pretty much all day whenever I turn on my phone. It's just something I like to do. And that is just static there. It doesn't change, it's not a stack or anything like that. But below that is where I have a smart stack. And there's only three that I'm using and I find really helpful and useful. Calendar, of course, you know, having it at this size means I can actually see what's coming up on my calendar and I can see the date, which is great. And then next I have reminders. No surprise here, when there's a reminder that is coming up, it pops up since this is a smart stack. Again, just very helpful. And the last one is Siri Shortcuts, which I think, at least before third-party support comes out, is the most useful and powerful of the widgets. Shortcuts is something I've only done a little bit of work with. I haven't gone in and really figured out everything I could do with it because it's, there's so much. But the ones that I have set up, I use on a daily basis. And the big one for me is weekday alarms. I don't know about you, but uh, I get paranoid about waking up. I wanna make sure I actually do. Even though I wake up on the first alarm pretty much every single time, there's always that thought in my head that, man, I might just not wake up this time and I'm gonna miss a meeting or something like that. So I'm just paranoid about it. So of course, I think like a lot of us, I set like a million different alarms. For me, I don't like to keep my alarms on a schedule because my schedule changes. So sometimes I don't wake up at that time. Sometimes I wake up earlier, sometimes I go later. It really just depends. But when I do set an alarm, it's always for the specific time. So that's where this shortcut comes in handy. All I do is hit that button and it turns on all the alarms that I have for that you know certain parameter. Another one is for the air conditioning. It's pretty hot here in California, but I use a Nest thermostat and that doesn't play very well. But I'm using an app called ThermoWatch and it actually lets you use Siri with your Nest thermostat. It's a third party app, but I find it to work pretty well. So I can just, again, tap it here and turns it on. And the last one is for my Model 3. One of my favorite things about having the Tesla Model 3 is that it's connected to my phone so I can activate things remotely. Again, I like to stay cool, so being able to turn on the AC when I'm you know, walking back to my car and it's cool when I get to it, that's very nice. And also opening the frunk. I don't have the key fob that you can buy separately and I don't wanna you know, reach into the car or open up the app. So here I can just quickly, I mean, I don't even have to do it on my phone, I could do it on my watch, quickly open up the frunk and you know, it's just much easier. And I'm doing this using the Tesla remote app, which gives you a bit more functionality, mainly being able to use Siri, because you can't do that in the main Tesla app. And there's just a ton of stuff that you can customize here, depending on what you want to do with your car. It's pretty cool. Your Siri shortcuts is, you know, it's a little thing, but there's so much that you can do with it. And having it right on my home screen is really helpful. Now for the today view, I don't really go there anymore at all. So it's just basically stock. I haven't really deleted or adjusted anything there. My browser of choice is Safari. And even though we're gonna be able to set that as default for different apps, I'm gonna be keeping this. Chrome was great, had its day, but if you can make that switch, get your extensions, get your bookmarks all over, I have really found Safari to just be a much better experience, especially now that we're probably gonna be getting 4K in YouTube, which is the one thing I'm missing. Safari, I have just found to be a much better experience. But if we go in here, you'll see today's sponsor. 
Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes, and it lets you take the next step in your creative journey. And they offer classes in many different creative fields, photography, videography, design, business. I mean, really anything you can think of in that creative field, Skillshare has a class for you. And what's great about Skillshare's classes is they're actually useful. You can apply what you learn here to real life. One of my favorite classes right now is the Productivity Masterclass from Ali Abdal. For me, it's giving me some tips on what I can do better to just get more done. And something like that is what you can expect from Skillshare. So you can get Skillshare Premium and all the classes for less than $10 a month, but for a limited time, if you go to the description down below, click that link, you can get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So check out that link and get learning. On my main screen, I have, again, the apps that I use all the time. So, you know, the phone, camera, photos, all that kind of stuff. I have my navigation. I, I'm one of those people that like to just go into Google Maps and like explore different places in the map and see the street view and everything. So I'm actually in that app quite a bit, which maybe is kind of weird, but I like doing it. I have my home folder, which has a bunch of my smart home apps and just things that I use around the house. Nothing particularly interesting there. But then in my finance folder, you know, basic finance stuff. But one app that I really enjoy, I don't use it all that often, but it really comes in handy when I do use it. It's called Privacy. This lets you create a kind of fake credit card. So I put my credit card in there, my real one, and then I can create a new different card with a different number. And that's just using the money from my real bank account or my real bank card or whatever. And what this is great for is things like free trials. So, you know, you have that seven day free trial or whatever, you have to remember to cancel it, otherwise they're gonna charge you. But with privacy, you don't have to worry about that because you can set an expiration date or you can set a limit. There's a bunch of stuff that you can do with these kind of burner cards. So, you know, in seven days, this card's just not gonna work anymore and I can't get charged. It's a great way to get around and also just save yourself a little bit of money because we've all been there, we've all forgotten it. This is a great app to check out and, and it's free. Other than that, it's pretty standard stuff here. I've got notes, Tesla, social media, YouTube and work stuff. I mean, there's really nothing crazy here, but there are a few other apps that I've been using that I think I can recommend. Now, I always get asked where I get my wallpapers from and there's really two places, well, three. The main place is I just use my own photos that I have taken, but if I'm not doing that, I get them from Unsplash or Vellum. Unsplash is a website that gives you free photography for really anything, but the main thing I use it for is for wallpapers and it's great, they're high quality. I mean, you have to search for them. I just go and type in wallpaper and just keep scrolling and eventually you're gonna find some that you really like. And that's basically what I do. Same thing goes for Vellum, although this is more of a dedicated wallpaper app. And again, you know, same idea, just keep scrolling and you'll find one that you like. Another one is an app that's a little bit more niche, but it's for white balance. And I'm not even gonna necessarily recommend the one I use, it's just the one I had and I paid for a long time ago, but having an app for this, if you do video work or photography work, is great. And you would think that it wouldn't be all that accurate because it's just using the camera in your phone, but I've found it to be very accurate, surprisingly. I've tested it with the white balance card and you know done it the proper way and then just used the phone and typed in that number. And surprisingly, they are very similar. It's not perfect, but when you're in a pinch and you just need to get a general idea of what the color temperature is, it works extremely well. And there's a lot of apps like that that don't you know replace professional tools, but when you're in a pinch, your phone can do a lot of it. So, I mean, really, that's all I have on my phone right now. It's really gotten shrunken down, especially with iOS 14. Now that I've gotten rid of those other pages, there's just not as much that I do on my phone. And I've said before that I've kind of toned down how much I'm using my phone overall, and I think a lot of it is due to just not having distractions. I get in, I do what I need to do, everything is laid out really well, and I'm just done. I don't have to keep going and I don't get distracted and go into a different app. It's just, I find iOS 14 is really good for that, for me at least. Now I can't wait for third party support. It's gonna make it even more interesting and I can do even more. But as of now, I'm happy with iOS 14 on the whole. And finally, you know, what's in my iPhone is kind of interesting again.